About some time ago, I had a random conversation on chat with an ex-challenger about the champions that impact the game the most. We thought, which champions would be the easiest to climb with if mastered or OTP'd? League of Legends has moved from the solo carry archetype that could be used back in the past and now is a more team-oriented game, which may not be a good thing because the good players won't climb as fast. The most frustrating thing, however, is being 35 minutes into a game and someone in your team gets randomly caught and you lose Baron afterwards because it happened to be your jungler or your main source of damage and there's absolutely nothing you can do besides getting oddly annoyed and frustrated. It has happened to me and it has happened to all of you before. But let's not stop here with the idea. Most of the time the person that dies in the minute 35 randomly and loses you the game dies usually to the person which impacts the game the most from the enemy team. Such as a fed Rengar, a fed Mastery, a random Xerath old, a Zoe Sleep, an Anivia Wall and so on. I want to ask you now, how can we impact the game the most? How can we help the team achieve victory? If we would see ourselves as impact percentages, how can we maximize it? For example, top accounts for 20% of team usefulness, mid lane for 30, jungle for 40 and the reminder, the bottom lane which fed the enemy team, only 10%. How can we increase our percentage of impact for our specific role? Let's do a definition for this weird word I use called impact. The impact on a game is the amount of combined useful things that you do for your team, the amount of help you do on kills, objectives and such, to achieve the final goal, victory. Help meaning either a ton of damage in a team fight, a good CC spell, a perfect roam and so on. This list will be filled with champions for different roles that in my personal opinion can help the player if at least understood and slowly mastered to climb towards higher divisions with ease. I will talk about some champions and will also try to give you some resources if you want to start practicing said champion. Remember, this list comes from my own personal experiences, OTPs that I found on op.gg challenger ladders or on my games in Master last season or from gold to diamond in this one or even people I found on YouTube as high elos, OTPs and such. Probably if we gonna sort roles we will get to the conclusion that support and top lane is at the bottom of the list for the least impact on a game. Simply because you rarely see good teleports in lower elos and in my honest opinion in diamond I rarely see supports that do plays that win the game. The very rare blitz or trash hook, the rarest good rakan engage or morgue Q and the list can continue. Obviously, supports will always be the easiest role to get carried, especially if you play Janna or Lulu and such. These champions, if you stick in the back of your team properly, they can perform exceptionally well. But it's way simpler to play them than to play well, a heavy engage support. So fucking well. Holy shit. A decent ADC can climb pretty well and easily, but I will probably not list any OTP stuff here, since playing ADC, in my humble opinion, will always require a pool of at least 3 champions. If you also duo with a decent support, you will surely climb to your actual skill level. If you want to climb using an ADC, just find the flavor of the month and stick to it. OPGG helps in this case. ADC is the most mechanical intense role and can easily help you climb, but this role is different for the purpose of the video. Junglers, mid laners and ADCs in my opinion are the most impactful roles. Mids and junglers have the most control over the map and as a mid laner if you also play with teleport and you know how to use it you can double or triple your actual impact on the game and you can steer your team to a win. I don't think there's any reason to talk about how important the jungler role is. From smite steals to good early and mid ganks or late game hyper carries or engages this role has it all. If you are better than the enemy jungler and you do better ganks than him you will surely climb. The top 10 this list includes champions that are either different or have good stuns, displacement abilities, invulnerabilities or resets, things that people don't usually know how to play against because they lack experience, so they do a mistake and lose the lane or the game. This list is not scaled by the difficulty of the champion, but most champions in this list will take time to master, especially understanding why these champions are powerful. Most of them require also roaming and precise and well-thought micro and macro plays. 
Furthermore, this list is thought for a player starting in gold and playing up to master tier or higher with the same champion. While you might see some champions lower on the list than others or not even mentioned, for example Zed, you have to keep in mind that some champions are also banned often. I also don't really focus much on mid lane assassins since the focus of the game has moved from the solo carry archetype and roaming or displacement abilities and well placed CC stop that in my opinion. Let's move on to the list now. On the 10th spot we have Darius. You'll recognize this player by the easy double kills he does on top against players that have no clue that Darius can output so much damage and his MRH stacks will always surprise inexperienced players or auto field and by the team fights where he ults everyone and usually gets at least a triple. A good flash E and the game is mostly done because your top laner fed too much. On the 9th spot we have Kha'Zix or Rengar. You'll see these players doing one shots in the mid or late game and then turning around the whole game, the good ones, obviously. I believe the 9th spot is well deserved for one of these champions because of how simple it is to start dealing a ton of damage and how much the bushes and the stealth factor helps in your ganks or escapes. Rengar can be played top as well. The 8th spot is taken up by Talia. I've seen too many pro players climb very fast with her simply because of her wall and general damage output per game. A good Talia OTP will know how to poke and when to engage and how to separate an objective from the enemy team and such. And they will always hit WE combos by the way. Her wall allows for quick roaming and a lot of enemy blocks when they don't have flash. On the 7th spot there is Master Yi. A good mastery either surprises the enemy team by a cheese gank at walls or simply farms until he's 6 and then starts to melt people. Cancelling autos and resetting abilities, surviving other abilities with Q and so much more make the champion so versatile and practically extremely strong in mid to late game especially against opponents that are not used to get one shot. On the 6th spot we have Katarina. Mean to high diamond used to be full of Katarina OTPs and I don't really know if it's still the norm because the champion gets 90% banned in my games but even with this it is still worth to mention. A good Katarina either wins lane or gets kills on other lanes. It seems even in diamond the map awareness is still low and people don't expect to get too shotted at level 6 or 7 by a Katarina. A good Katarina will make your lane phase extremely stressful and will know how to deal damage in teamfights or how to catch people off guard. On the 5th spot we have Aurelion Soul. This is a champion that when OTP'd usually gets a double kill on bot lane at level 3. People usually know they will get ganked but never seem to manage surviving it even though they get pinged several times. His E allows to travel over walls so this is a major factor on how to achieve smart ganking paths. His W is in my opinion one of the most difficult abilities to master in the game, so beware if you pick this champion. Trindamer holds the 4th spot. This champion is perhaps the king of split push and for solo queue reasons it surely works. Levels 1 to 6 against some champions can be a pain in the ass, but sometimes you'll get surprised by the random auto attack crit that he gave you and you will pop. This is the champion that won't join your teamfights until he is extremely well farmed and he will always abuse and take towers as much as he can when mastered. It's pretty difficult to counter him in lower elos because he usually gets a huge CS lead over the top laner and if he's not dealt with he will surely become a big problem. On the third spot we have Quinn, the bird that on lane phase is a bully and in arrest is a super strong roamer. A good queen will always be bot lane after winning her lane because of obnoxious range and auto attacks. If you want to master this champion you have to practice intensive roaming on other lanes. Very few people expect you to come bot at level 6 or even mid sometimes, so play to your strength and abuse as much as you can. This champion should work up to diamond elo without much problems when roaming. As for this champion and all others, roam smart and get an objective after getting a kill or two such as drakes and towers. On the second place we have Anivia. Somehow this top 10 is made mostly of birds, but this champion offers super strong wave clear, a QE combo that mid to late game deals 70% of your HP, a wall that if you combo well with your Q and predict it can melt opponents and on top of that a passive that makes the enemy that dive you cry in their final moments because they forgot about it or didn't knew you had it up. This champion when OTP usually farms like a madman and is pushing any lanes without fuzz forever. 
The trick about this champion in lower elos especially is her wall. Very few people know how to react to a surprise WQ combo and usually get caught and die. The rank 1 and first spot is held by none other than Heimerdinger, the king of impact. You'll usually see him in top lane or mid lane but very rare since a pretty complex champion compared to others and even though you can randomly get kills with his turrets and a good E, you gotta be extremely smart about it. I want to think that very few people play him because it's very difficult to manage his turrets and his 3 ultimate choices. Which one is the best to use and how to output the most damage in certain situations are the questions you'll want to answer first when trying to OTP him. I believe this champion can offer the most potential when mastered because of the people that aren't experienced against him and also his surprisingly high damage output. Other good picks outside of the top 10. Akali, hyperscaling mid to late game assassin that is easy to abuse in lower elos due to lack of awareness and such. Twisted Fate. While this champion is extremely strong in the hands of the right person, in lower elos I believe Talia and Aurelion Sol, his counterparts, deal a lot more damage per total and have a lot more lane pressure than him, again, in lower elos, where the player isn't as experienced as a challenger one. Cassiopeia. Super strong mid lane pick that can easily carry you early to mid game and with good ults can change your late game for the better. I didn't mention it in the top because I believe this is another pick that lower elo players will have a super hard time to master since her ultimate isn't that easy to use and her general playstyle can be stressful. Shaco. I did not want to include this champion in the top because I've seen too many OTPs ruin my games because of some random playstyle mistake. This champion is in my opinion another one that is extremely hard to master. Most OTPs won't play with flash which can be abusable at times if the enemy knows how to play around it. And in higher elo Shaco's Q smoke gets detected easier and you're in for a hard time. Perhaps it might work in lower elos, but I'd say you'll face difficulties as you climb. Evelyn, stealthy jungler with a lot of hyper carry potential. I didn't mention her in the top, but it's a strong jungler for the ones who want to master her. Great gank potential, especially in lower divisions where the awareness is pretty low. Twitch, pretty much same as Evelyn in terms of stealth, just without a CC spell and way more hyper carry damage later on. A Twitch player can be deadly in the right hands, mostly as a jungler though. Clad, Ilaoi and Camille, strong lane fence champion with a great transition towards mid and even late for some. I didn't mention them because I believe other champions in the top lane are better besides Ilaoi and they have greater carry potential. Leblanc. In the right hands, extremely deadly champion. The main problem is, especially in lower elos, that mostly blank players forget to farm after a certain minute and they chase kills too much, allowing the opponent mid laner to actually gain advantage over them. If this mistake is surpassed, it's pretty simple afterwards. Zoe. Hit E and GG. A good Zoe will probably know how to one shot players later on, causing major problems in late game because that teammate won't stop dying, so just find the right target and abuse that. Truth be told, I can list way more champions and how their abilities can achieve you victory, but the truth, after all, is that you gotta play a lot and understand the champion deep before actually hoping big results. Watch the players I mentioned, learn how they solve different scenarios and bring their playstyle to yours. If you OTP a champion that is not on the list and slowly climb with it, stick to it. I recommend if you want to climb to search for good players that master that champion and try to use their style. For all the champions I mentioned, there exists at least one challenger player who OTPs somewhere on the ladder. I'm Drumat and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, this is just my personal opinion, which I invite you to discuss it in the comments. I made this video just for the general guidelines and I'm sure each of these champions work if you dedicate at least 20 to 50 games for start and you focus on understanding their strengths and weaknesses. Links for everything I used or mentioned in the description. Have a nice day or night. Goodbye guys.